is Rajmati and welcome to this new lesson on algorithm. This is a third lesson in the series of problem solving and design. Now, the main term of this lesson is algorithm. Let us take a look to the learning objectives of this lesson. So we're going to learn what is an algorithm, ways to document an algorithm, so let me begin the discussion, what is an algorithm? We come across algorithm, which is a sequence of steps in everyday life. When you have to catch up the bus for your lesson every morning at school, you follow a given steps, such as you brush your teeth, you prepare your bag, and so on. It's the same for preparing tea. In the same way, the computer follows a sequence of steps to carry out a specific task, maybe taking a certain input from the user. For example, if we have a calculator program, the user will be inputting a series of numbers for addition, maybe. And then the process is carried out by the computer. And this process is carried out by a given algorithm, which follows a series of steps. As such, an algorithm is a sequence of defined steps that can be carried out to perform a task. Algorithm design involves developing step-by-step -step instruction to solve a problem. Now, in order to design an algorithm, we need to develop step-by-step -step instruction to solve a given problem. So, there are certain techniques and constructs you must follow when designing your algorithm. An algorithm is very important because a good algorithm will make a good program. So designing an algorithm involves at least three different ways that you can do it. We're going to see that in a few minutes. So like I've said, algorithm, you meet it every day, in everyday life. If you want to bake a cake, you will need a certain ingredients, such as sugar, butter, eggs, flour, and teaspoons. And you will follow a certain steps in order. So, like this here, you can see, we follow step one, two, which is to mix the ingredients. Let's take a look to an evaluation exercise. June 2017, paper 21, question number 3. We have a satellite navigation system. It works using destination details entered by the user. So the user will input the detail. Now the details being inputted can be either a new destination or chosen from a previously saved destination. Now these are the two different ways if you take a look where the user can enter the detail. Now the satellite system has another functionality which is to output direction to the destination in either visual map or a list of direction. Here you can see it. we have two different methods, the map itself and the list. So the satellite system is a main system we have the input destination which is subsystem of the above system which is satellite navigation system as such one is input destination therefore the other one will become output direction and the two methods for input destination can be obviously either new destination or chosen from previously saved destination so these are systems, like you have seen, which may be broken down into other subsystems. 
and this is the answer of this exercise we have output direction at the same level of input destination 